Today I want to talk about the most iconic car that I think I've ever owned. And I've grown to love so much. I mean, I loved it before I even bought it. Uh, back when I had my B5 Passat, that was my daily. That's when I first heard about uh, the B5 S4 and how awesome it is. And I became a fanboy. I mean, it was always in the back of my mind how cool that car was, how much I wanted it. But back then I was uh, barely out of high school, uh, early in college, you know, making very little money. And at the time those cars were worth about $5,000. I think that was approximately seven years ago. Since then the prices have gone up. These cars have become more and more rare because people are, you know, crashing them, parting them out, breaking them and whatnot. So uh, the value has risen. But back then I think a good example of a B5 S4 was worth around $5,000. I could not afford that back then. Uh, the car I was daily driving was, uh, I bought it for slightly over $2,000. $5,000 cars were not in my budget just yet. Plus, with the B5 S4, you can't really afford it uh, without having some decent money because it requires a lot of services. Uh, it takes some work to keep up with it, especially if it was somewhat neglected by the previous owner. You never know how much issues are going to come up. And back then I was really inexperienced with cars. I didn't know how to work on them. Uh, I tried doing an alternator change on my B5 Passat and I miserably failed and ended up having a mechanic do it. I knew what the car was. I knew I wanted it, but I couldn't afford it. And that was the case for multiple years. Um, and as I was saving up money, you know, I was in college uh, working as a delivery driver. After I've owned the Passat for a little while, I ended up buying a B7A4 2.0 turbo. Uh, and uh, th that was a great car. I loved it so much and during that ownership of that car is when I actually started experimenting with working on cars more. Uh, that car ended up getting crashed at some point. I had I basically rebuilt it myself because it got crashed by an uninsured motorist and uh, I had no way of paying a shop to do it. I did not have the money to do it. The car was totaled so I ended up rebuilding it in my own driveway. It didn't look pretty but with time it got better and better and better. Anyway, uh, one day I was scrolling through probably Facebook Marketplace, maybe I think it was Craigslist. Back then Craigslist was used a lot more and I would scroll through it quite a bit. I don't know why because I couldn't really afford much but I came across my at the time basically dream car, the B5 S4. Uh, with a manual transmission, so it was it was a great car and mechanically it was in really good shape The problem was that the previous owner had rolled it over and obviously a lot of body damage all around You know there was some stuff on the roof the quarter panels were destroyed Fenders doors all that stuff uh, was in pretty bad shape however, the rollover wasn't strong enough to mess up the structural parts of it so the windshield actually survived. So like both windshields were in good shape, not a single crack on them. There was one broken window, uh, but it was no big deal. Anyway, it was listed for, I want to say $1,500. And that was something I could afford at that time. And I, you know, to me it was a, a dream car that I've, I've thought about for so long. And finally I have one that I can actually buy. Obviously the body was in awful shape but to me it didn't matter as much because to me what mattered was the mechanics of that car. You know the engine was bone stock. Uh, not that I would have been opposed to slightly modified cars but they wouldn't be in my budget anyways. I saw it and I, I felt like I had to jump on it and I think within a few days um, I went out to see it and I had cash in the pocket, I was ready to buy it. Uh, one of the problems was that I did not know how to drive stick at that time. Probably should have because two of my previous cars ended up dying because of their blown transmissions but it doesn't matter. I brought one of my buddies, uh, Steven, with me to go look at the car because he knew how to drive manuals. He had one himself uh, and I wanted him to drive it back for me. We went out there, we checked out the car, it drove perfectly. It was beautiful mechanically exterior was pretty rough. I remember it was winter, it was really cold, so Steven had to drive the car to my house with a missing window. 
Uh, I think the heater wasn't working either, but the, uh, it did have heated seats, so that was helpful for him. You know, the dream came true. I was, it was, it's really hard for me to try and remember what it was like to buy that car back when I didn't have a lot of experience buying cars, I didn't have a lot of experience with cool cars either, and having that in my possession, I was, it was just so much adrenaline, I was so happy to have it. We brought it home and almost immediately within a few weeks I think it was right before Thanksgiving that I bought it and I used the Thanksgiving break is when I actually dug into it started taking stuff apart I remember one of the first things I replaced were the fenders I think and I did you know it was a budget build or rebuild uh, I was I didn't start building that car it stayed stuck for quite a while let's hear it let's hear it rebuilding the body anyways so whenever I would find a part out or go to a junkyard and find an A4 you know I'd grab some parts and little by little I started fixing it up which honestly wasn't so bad I mean I think on the budget that I had I did a pretty good job I ended up changing out the fenders uh, doors uh, hood bumper uh, I want to say that's about it and that's how it started. Even though it had all this body damage, it was perfectly drivable, which was amazing because I was able to enjoy the car. And that helps a lot when you buy a project car, being able to drive it. Uh, that keeps you motivated. That keeps you in love with that car. And instead of letting it sit, uh, you kind of forget about it. You forget the feeling that it gives you when you drive it. So you lose the motivation to work on it. But luckily in this case, I was able to keep driving it as I'm working on it. So it kept me entertained. It kept me motivated to keep giving it love. And, and it, was, it was great. It was a great experience. I was uh, buying, I started slowly buying aftermarket parts to install on it. I think I started with like a uh, sway bar, some exhaust work. I ended up installing test pipes in it. Uh, and little by little I kept working my way up and it actually got to a pretty solid modified car. I even got it at some point. I tuned it straight to stage 2 plus which in the B5 world means it was a cranked up boost on stock turbos, stock engine but on E85. So I swapped out the injectors, I swapped out the fuel pump. Um, I think that's about all the requirements there are to E85. I had so much fun with it. I mean I left the quarter panels the way they were because I couldn't pay a shop to fix them and I couldn't weld myself uh, and it was just a bit too big of a project for me at the time. My plan was to eventually buy a clean shell of that car and swap in everything from mine into that which is actually exactly what I did relatively recently but we'll get to that later. So I uh, was enjoying the car you know I started doing mods on it I even took uh, to the track once I think uh, it ended up running 12.8, uh, which I think is pretty decent for a stock turbo car. It served me really well. Sure, there was stuff breaking a lot. Most of the time, however, it was just stuff that I would mess up as I'm working on things and I'm learning how to do things. Besides, you know, taking it to the track, I may or may not have done some uh, stuff on the streets. Um, But there was one time where I was uh, on a close course racing with my buddy uh, from high school who had a E92 M3 I think or E90, sorry I'm not a BMW guy, I'm not sure, it was a coupe. I know there's a 90, 92 very based on the amount of doors the car has. Regardless, uh, he did beat me, um, I, my ego is a little hurt so I'm gonna say that it was because he has a dual clutch transmission shifts were much much faster than mine but anyway I had uh, and this is a key moment you know I wouldn't have mentioned this if it was just another race uh, but we took it to quite high speeds and um, obviously there was a lot of high RPM involved there's a lot of 
worn out plastics in the car and plastics hold quite a bit of stuff and what happened was there's a little pin that holds down the coolant temperature sensor in the back of the engine and what happened was that pin was old enough to the point where it wasn't holding that temperature in, uh, sensor in very well and it ended up letting it pop out due to the pressure coolant went everywhere except for a place where it's supposed to go. The thing is that when this happened I was doing triple digit speeds on a highway, sorry not highway, a close track. You know I'm paying attention to the road uh, I couldn't see, coolant wasn't splashing out onto the windshield or anything like that. It was all contained. Uh, what I did notice uh, within a minute or two was a very noticeable amount of vapor in my rear view mirror and that was just caused by the coolant getting onto the exhaust and uh, evaporating making a good amount of smoke so I ended up having to drive without any coolant for about it was definitely less than five minutes but because the car was so heated up from uh, doing multiple runs, it was already really hot. Obviously, I couldn't read the temperature because if there's no coolant, the temperature sensors cannot read anything. Plus, my temperature sensor had popped out. So even if it could read air temperature, uh, it wouldn't have accurate readings. Um, so it was just chilling in the engine bay. It popped out. It was, you know, wiggling around my temperature gauge just dropped to zero. So I did end up getting off the closed course, I parked at a gas station, uh, once again less than five minutes of driving. So I parked it at a gas station, I talked to them, I'm like hey can I leave the car here, it broke down, I will have it gone within two days. Uh, they're like sure that's fine, just leave us a phone number. So I did that, uh, next time if you're ever in this situation don't just leave the car in their parking lot, uh, they can and will probably tow it. Just let them know, talk to them. I think they will cooperate. When I had time, I think the day after that, I had like a 12 hour shift, so I wasn't able to work on it. But the day after I came back, I swept out the temperature sensor, I filled up the coolant, and I drove it home. And it seemed to be perfectly fine. But then, uh, within a few weeks, I assume, I started noticing a bad symptom smoke coming out whenever I would beat on the car. Uh, whenever I would stay in high RPM, go in high boost, I would notice a good amount of uh, smoke in the back. And uh, obviously I, I, I pulled over, I went to check the car and I just saw a decent amount of coolant everywhere. But this time the sensor is in its place and the coolant uh, spraying was elsewhere. What turned out to happen is that it, the coolant was coming out of the overflow, uh, which is at the bottom of the reservoir, of the coolant reservoir, and it was just... Um, Basically the coolant was over pressurizing and it was spitting it out of the overflow onto the downpipes. Uh, great design by Audi, but that just, it is what it is. Couple potential reasons for that. I think you, if you know much about cars, you already know what happened, but... Reason number one is that the cap on the uh, overflow tank is in bad shape. It's supposed to release pressure. I changed the cap, it didn't help. Uh, and basically what that meant is that coolant is truly getting over pressurized and there's very few things that cause that uh, and in my case that was probably I haven't actually confirmed this but it was most likely either the head gasket or the head being warped it wasn't bad enough to the point that coolant was leaking out whenever I was doing a normal driving but whenever I uh, sent it uh, and stayed in at least 50% throttle just basically any any significant boost uh, the coolant would overpressurize, especially if it, I did that for a long time, 20 seconds plus, that's when uh, the issue would start happening and the coolant would start spitting out. Uh, quite concerning, however the car was still drivable, you know, it, I could still drive it without beating on it and I also could drive it and beat on it as long as I kept a jug of coolant in the back, which is exactly what I did. I definitely wasn't ready to do, uh, you know, a motor pool and uh, either change the head gasket or change the actual head. It was just not something uh, that was feasible at the time. And by the way, this whole time I've had the, these destroyed quarter panels. One of them is significantly worse than the other. And I think the car looked good still. Obviously that quarter panel was awful, but uh, it kind of added character. Um, people would ask me. It would be a conversation starter. It stayed like that for quite a while because I just couldn't afford uh, you know, doing a motor rebuild and stuff like that. I figured if I'm gonna pull the motor and uh, fix head gaskets I might as well do rods and then I can 
really crank up the boost and install some bigger turbos on it. So I just decided to put it off until I'm more financially stable uh, to be able to afford a uh, an actual actual build. If you don't know, these cars can relatively easily with just uh, rods and turbos they can hit 600 wheel horsepower uh, without much issues. So that was my plan. Kind of sort of stuck with it. Approximately a year and a half ago there was another B5S4 that popped up for sale relatively close to me and it was going for I believe $2,500 which uh, was a pretty good deal considering the fact that the car had a lot of aftermarket parts on it. So the previous owner had built it to be a uh, pretty much a roll racer. He installed clutch on it. It had a uh, rebuilt transmission with carbon synchros. It had uh, K24 SRM turbos and he did all that I think back in 2012 and he put on approximately 50 or 60,000 miles on those turbos and uh, basically near the end of his ownership he kind of you know started adulting and uh, stopped being into working on cars and just being too busy and just not enjoying it as much so he really started neglecting the car uh, when I got it I mean the suspension was completely shot wheel bearings were in awful shape it wasn't running very well but it had a very clean body it came from South Carolina I believe uh, actually it did have a uh, damaged bumper it had a damaged hood because the previous owner said he hit some uh, road debris on a highway and ended up destroying the bumper there was one thing that the seller mentioned and I didn't think of it back then uh, but uh, what he said was the car will most likely have a rebuild title I just knew that no matter what this car is basically worth it to me no matter what happens to it just the clean body and the turbos on that car are well worth the money that I'm paying for it. The best part was that the, between my car and this car they could make one complete very good running car. That was my thinking, you know, because my car had a great suspension, I modified coilovers, sway bars, control arms, clean front end, I had, all of that was going on to this car. It actually drove home. It was a very scary drive because the alignment was so out of whack it made so many noises, it vibrated a lot and it would also not be mechanically stable uh, it wouldn't want to, it would misfire a lot in uh, low RPM and it would just have like zero torque and power like at low RPM I had to stay at 3500 and above just to be able to climb, a, to climb up a hill it got to my house which was a little over an hour away and uh, we made it home I started tearing them apart which included you know completely taking apart all the suspension uh, from my rolled over car, putting them into the new car, all the sway bars, control arms, the shocks were completely destroyed because I forgot to mention the, the new car had 280,000 miles on it and all of that was on stock suspension. I'm not sure what the logic of this previous owner was but all he did was you know put it to 500 horsepower, slap 30 psi into the engine and uh, not upgrade the suspension. He did however install Brembo uh, 17Z calipers onto the front which is, uh, which is a good touch. Uh, that's something I had done on my car as well as far as he went with uh, modifications to the suspension and handling. Um, a little crazy to me uh, but you know it is what it is. So now this is where the uh, title issue comes into play. Once again he gave me a clean South Carolina title which was great you know I didn't think twice about it I thought that if somebody presents you a clean title doesn't matter from what state you just send it to your DMV with your application and they just send you back the clean title for your state with your name on it not what happened I mailed it out to the DMV or Secretary of State whatever I wasn't getting anything back they ended up sending me the license plates which was uh, like great but for some reason they wouldn't send me back the title um, you know I didn't try and call them or anything I just waited for it but I remember that at the same time as I submitted that title I also sent out my motorcycle title and I got that within a few weeks but this one month after month I wouldn't get anything back from Secretary of State until one day I would say approximately three to four months later I finally get a letter in the mail that says uh, based on our records this car has a salvage title so you cannot register it. That was a complication I kind of didn't expect that but it is what it is you know I still don't regret purchasing that car it was still worth it I was able to put the two cars together and the car looks great now 
it still has that 280,000 mile motor on it with you know aftermarket turbos that have 60,000 miles on them and they blow some smoke it's fine I'll get to that those issues later the problem is that right now I cannot register the car and this has been an issue for at least a year uh, because for me to register it I have to pass an IDOT inspection. Uh, first, I already made a contract with a license rebuilder. So if you're not familiar in Illinois, regular individuals without dealers and rebuilders license, they cannot get rebuild titles for cars. You have to make a contract with a rebuilder. Uh, they may or may not, you know, fix the car. And then you can bring the paperwork signed by the rebuilder, bring the paperwork to the DMV, after you pass the IDOT inspection. So the Department of Transportation has to take a look at the car and make sure that it's safe for the roads uh, and they check things like um, turn signals, suspension, lights, wipers, windshields, that sort of stuff. So I procrastinated a lot on this car because of that issue. You know, I was too busy with my full-time job. At this point I'm uh, out of college for a year or two and I'm working full time and I'm also trying to flip cars on the side and I have so much stuff going on in my life, you know, I don't have time to deal with this situation because this car, you know, wasn't in good shape. It wasn't ready to be driven and it really needed an alignment. Basically, long story short, I finally got into somewhat presentable shape. It was still not perfect, but it looked good. You know, I knew of all the issues the car has, like a terrible wheel alignment, but I just eyeballed it and it looked okay. I had to raise the coilovers because the car was slammed. I had to uh, fix an exhaust leak. Basically some little odds and ends that they care about that most people don't really. So I ended up bringing it to the inspection. He takes a look at the car. Turns out one of my brake lights is out. <sighs> Great. Then he uh, also said that my windshield wipers need to be replaced. So he looked at the windshield area and he also asked me if there were any lights on the dash. At the time there wasn't. So now we're getting into pretty recent territory. This all happened within the last year. So basically I failed the inspection. I have to do it all over again. Luckily the inspections are only like 35 bucks so it's not a big deal. But it was still a bummer that I couldn't have this issue sorted out. And uh, once again I started procrastinating. I uh, finally, you know, changed the brake light bulb, I installed new wipers on it, I bring it back. As I'm pulling up, he's like, what happened? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I, I fixed the things you said to fix. And he's like, what about the windshield? I'm like, what do you mean? You didn't say anything about the windshield. And I did have a cracked windshield, which apparently is a no-go, but I didn't know that because last time I was there, he didn't mention it, and the windshield was definitely cracked back then. Somehow he didn't notice it, and he basically sent me on my way once again. Luckily, he didn't actually perform the inspection. He just saw it right away and he was like, yeah, you don't, you can't pass with a cracked windshield. So back to procrastinating. A couple months later, I finally get the windshield installed and uh, I'm like, okay, today's the day. We're going to the inspection and we're getting it uh, figured out. You know, we're getting the, we're passing the inspection. Everything should be in order now. I go to start the car. It starts right, starts up, not right up. It definitely struggles a little bit but uh, when I did start it it showed two new lights on dash uh, and as far as I understand they don't like to see that when they do the inspections and I don't think they're gonna pass me I could probably try and hide it with some electrical tape on the cluster but I don't really want to be that guy it has some kind of a fault for ABS, I think uh, there might be a wiring issue. It still runs and drives okay, but I I don't know how to proceed at this point. I have to try and fix that, but once again, I just really don't have that kind of time. Plus right now it's winter. I hate working on cars in the winter. Basically, remember what I was saying at the beginning of the video? Being able to drive the car gives you the motivation you need to keep working on it. That's kind of what's not been happening with this car anymore in the sense that it's technically illegal for me to drive it. It has a salvage title. I've driven it maybe twice in the last year and both of those times we were just to go to the inspection place. 